Hey everyone and welcome. Uh, today I want to share my one day costuming project. This was originally a challenge issued by Kiralee Cosplay, so I want to thank her for that. <laughs> so what is my project? It is a corset cover. I was inspired by all of the lovely, lovely patterns in the Priscilla Yoke book, which was published in 1916. And I actually downloaded um, a PDF version of this book from antiquepatternlibrary.org, which I will link below. Scrolling through the PDF, I decided what I really wanted to make was the pineapple corset cover. While I did keep track of how long I spent working on the collar itself, I am not including it in my time count for the one day challenge, um, primarily because I did not do it in one single day. I spent about 12 and a half hours crocheting the collar in three roughly equal um, spurts of time over three days. Um, basically watching the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings. So yeah, I'm not counting that towards the one day, <laughs> one dayness of this project. The collar is made uh, with a size 40 Lisbeth crochet cotton and a 0.75 hook, which is a modern uh, US size 14 steel hook. The pattern actually calls for a size 12 hook, which would be a um, 1.25 millimeter hook now but I had to go with what sizes I had on hand. Uh, it also calls for a size 50 thread which is actually a little finer than the thread I used but again I had to defer to what I could source easily online because my local stores don't seem to carry anything finer than a size 10 anymore which would have been way too chunky to use to make uh, this collar. I also made some changes to the pattern before I actually uh, started crocheting it. The pattern as written has you make each pineapple separately and then join them together when working on the upper lattice portion of the collar for ease sake and to minimize the number of thread ends I had. I rewrote the pattern so that I could do it basically as one contiguous piece. I say one, I really mean two. And what I did was I I went, I made the base band and then I went pineapple to pineapple, keeping them connected as I made them. And then I added the lattice piece, which is the inner part of the collar afterwards. As for the corset cover itself, the book doesn't actually include any information about what the shape of it should be. Um, it's, it's just a pattern for the lace collar. So I basically went by the photo that is included with the pattern and just kind of guessed what shape it should be to make it look similar. The fabric I am using is a natural fiber, although I believe it is a cotton rayon blend. I burn tested it um, several months ago now um, when I was thinking of using it for a different project. It doesn't quite behave exactly the way the co a cotton would, but as I said, I burn tested it and it smelled like burning fiber. So I'm pretty sure it is completely natural, uh, rayon being a derivative and not a full on synthetic the way polyester is. So I feel fine using that for this project. I The only other really soft fabric I had on hand was um, a cotton lawn or voile which was a little too soft and wifty for what I wanted for this corset cover. Um, because this is a somewhat more high-necked corset cover, I wanted it to be able to use it under the really delicate shirt waists you see in the early Edwardian period with all of that lace insertion. So I wanted a corset cover to have a little more coverage since my shirt waist wouldn't. I started with just a simple selvage to selvage full width piece of my fabric, which was cut to um, half of my bust measurement plus a couple inches. And I basically just plonked the <laughs> collar right down in the middle of this piece of fabric and uh, didn't bother to otherwise shape the piece or anything yet. I waited to do that until after I had sewn the collar in. I treated the collar as I would any other type of insertion 
before sewing it in, so what I did was I basted it down using a high contrast navy blue thread. And then I just took some Guterman silk thread and I sewed around the outer edge of the collar. I considered sewing it by machine, but since I had spent so much time making this lace by hand, I decided I just didn't want the possibility of visible, visible machine stitching on my collar after I had spent so much time making it. So that's why I decided to insert it by hand even though it took a lot longer to do. Once it was fully sewn along the outer edge, I then pulled all of my basting stitches and cut out the center which would be where my head will need to go. <sighs> Nothing to do but go for the snip. I left myself a fairly wide margin after I cut this, um, mainly just to give myself the extra room to play it safe. As I pinned it down and then sewed down my second line of stitching around the collar, I did trim away all of the excess to make it neater. And yep, that's how that went. Alright, I am back again and I have finished doing the last of the hand sewing for the collar. So, whew, now it's just the easy bit left to go. So, I want to be honest, I didn't actually film all of this in a single day. I started working around 3.30 in the afternoon and I worked until about 11 o'clock that evening. I did all of this while my state was still under stay-at-home orders for the COVID crisis, so it wasn't really a big deal for me, already having been a night owl, to work later on into the evening. But the reason I stopped uh, when I did at about 11 was because I live in an attached twin and my sewing machine is really noisy, so I didn't want to annoy my neighbors. To shape the body of the corset cover, I started with the shoulders, I, which I offset slightly so that the back neckline was a little higher than the front, and then I just measured from the top of my shoulder down to where my waistline would be, and I added a little extra for just so that it wouldn't sit tight against my back, and then a little more so that I could have a casing on the bottom. I did keep the back square, as you saw to ensure that it wouldn't be really full in case I was wearing something that was slightly more fitted over top of it. The f when I cut the front out, I did flare it out, as you can see. The It's kind of like an axe head shape, almost. The I added uh, three inches extra of length to let it blouse over, plus another inch for the casing. And I also kind of curved the line, the line up at the waistline from the center front to the side seams to make sure that at the side seam the length was correct from the shoulder to the waist that both the front and the back matched up and to also again concentrate the fullness more in the front of the corset cover rather than the sides in the back. I did actually film myself cutting the uh, the corset cover out, but I did such a bad job framing it that I basically only got the very middle of the fabric and you don't see any of what I'm actually doing. So yeah, that's why you, that, that is not in this video at all. As for the final sewing and assembly, what I did first was I surged all of my raw edges just to make life easier and leave it less prone to fraying. Um, in the event that I do need to wash it at some point. I then just matched my side seams and I sewed up. I believe it was nine and a half inches up from the waist to what would be the underarm and on either side. I then did a very narrow rolled hem around the arm openings and then I did a three-quarter inch or I folded up three-quarters of an inch 
for the casing at the bottom. I didn't measure it or anything, I just eyeballed it, and I also didn't bother to turn my other end in since I had already surged it. Uh, it's not going to fray, so I'm not worried about having to finish that edge. And rather than put an eyelet, I just left an opening in my center front on the inside for my drawstring. Alright, I am now done with all of the sewing, so all I've got left to do is to put in the drawstrings. I've got a narrow um, yeah, a 1 8 a 1 8 inch cotton uh, tape that I got from Burnley and Trowbridge, I'm pretty sure, that is going to go in the waist, which will actually be a functional drawstring. And then I've got some four millimeter silk, China silk ribbon that I'm going to put up here for more of a decorative drawstring. And a giant hunk of needle, ready to go. Okay, I know I said I was done with all of my sewing, but I lied. I'm going to do one more quick thing. And I'm just going to back stitch and forth a couple times here in the very center back, just so that my um, tape can't pull from side to side and get really uneven. So this will keep it centered in the casing. So I am officially done with this for now. There was a pattern for lace to go on the armhole edging. There, there were directions for a lace, but it was a really, really um, simple lace and I didn't like the pattern as written. So I, I haven't found just a narrow lace that I like to put on here yet. So until I do that, I am calling this officially done. <laughs> and if and when I do find a narrow lace pattern that I like, that I feel like wor would work well with the collar, then I will make it and add it in. But no rush on that. So, all right, this is all done with the sewing. Yay! Here is just a quick look at the corset cover on my dress form. Uh, my dress form isn't quite the right shape, so it doesn't hang exactly the way it should. But you get the idea. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you guys for watching. Quick behind the scenes shot. Sewing bunnies!